Good morning, everybody. Now, the largest wind farm in the world is going to be constructed in the North Sea off the UK coast, actually uh, off the coast of Yorkshire and Norfolk. And the contract for this has been given to a company which is Danish. It's called Orsted. They, they won the contract um, a few years ago, but there was uh, some kerfuffle about whether they were actually going to go ahead and construct this wind farm because the strike price that they uh, agreed uh, when they got the contract, I think it was 2015, um, is now uh, too low. Uh, so there was a round of uh, new contracts for wind farms, uh, offshore wind, uh, um, to be built uh, off, off the coast of the UK in September of this year, 2023. Nobody bid for it because the strike price was £44 per megawatt hour. The government has then massively increased the strike price from £44 to £73 per megawatt hour. And then this has meant uh, other people uh, are interested uh, in bidding in the next round, which is going to be next year. But this company, Orsted, um, has apparently got permission from the government to bid for a higher strike price for some of the uh, offshore wind farm that they were going to build uh, anyway. And uh, that wind farm is called Hornsey 3. There's already Hornsey 1 and 2. And there's already over 300 wind turbines in the North Sea. Um, they're spinning around killing birds. Uh, this is going to add another 230 wind turbine, 231, sorry, wind turbines to um, the 300, uh, more than 300 that are already there. Uh, and supposedly, um, and, and the, and the, the propaganda, the promotion says it could power 3.3 million homes in the UK. Well, it could do if the wind was blowing at a constant um, optimal speed of about 40 to 50 miles an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. But of course, that isn't the case. When the wind stops blowing, there is no energy generation from wind turbines and you have to have a hundred percent backup from energy sources that are actually reliable and continuous like nuclear, coal, gas, oil uh, and the like, carbon-based fuels and nuclear. They for uh, decades have provided the bedrock of our energy generation. And for the money which is being used to put up these 261 wind turbines, um, it's going to be about £8 billion needed to construct these. And I, I, that includes the price of mining metals out of the ground uh, to make the wind turbines, constructing them wherever they're made, in China or whatever. <laughs> transporting them across the world to the North Sea, uh, putting them on a big shaft uh, in the middle of the sea on a massive concrete bed that is um, for each one, which is about the size of a football pitch so it doesn't fall down and uh, it doesn't get corroded, even though they do sort of corrode uh, quite quickly in the salt water, which is a problem that uh, some people didn't think of for some of these um, Offshore wind turbines are actually uh, corrosion is, is much faster than, than people anticipated. So some of the ones that are already around are, are having problems now. Um, so obviously, you know, this is a huge amount of money. If we spend that money on small modular nuclear reactors, it would produce more than double the energy uh, continuously and reliably for the same price. So we could we could build eight or so small modular nuclear reactors, um, which would be a far better solution uh, for the nation and our energy production, because nuclear reactors don't turn off when the wind stops blowing. They don't turn off when the sun stops shining like solar power, solar panels do. Um, so this just sounds like another huge uh, waste of money, a huge piece of financial irresponsibility. Um, and the government doesn't care, though, because they're using your money and my money. They're using taxpayers' money to increase the strike price 
and subsidize these uh, wind turbines to be built. Um, now, of course, yes, if the wind is blowing fast, it will provide that amount of energy. But then when the wind stops blowing, if we're reliant on wind uh, entirely, then um, your, your lights are going to go out. And, and this is just for producing electricity for the national grid. I mean, the government seems to have the plan, and I've been looking up on this, they actually want to increase wind capacity, and the capacity means if it was operating at 100% all the time, all year round, they want to increase capacity up to 50 gigawatts um, of power. Now, peak demand in the UK is 48.6 gigawatts, so they actually want more capacity from wind um, than the uh, entire capacity uh, of peak demand in the winter in the UK. I suppose someone's got the idea that if they build all these wind turbines, we can get 100% of our energy uh, from wind, <laughs> forgetting that it doesn't produce any energy when the wind isn't blowing. I mean, what is the idea here? Do they want to turn off all of our nuclear and, and oil and coal and gas power stations? And they've already decommissioned and literally blown up our coal power stations. There was a conservative minister, Alok Sharma, I made a video about it uh, a few months ago. He actually was celebrating blowing up Ferry Bridge coal power station and saying, this is our future, our future is renewable, make coal history. You know, this is a slogan uh, that, that they use. So he was, he was showing that uh, they're actually utterly and completely destructive to our carbon-based energy sources and uh, power stations that we've used uh, for decades, which are good and they're reliable and they're continuous and they're cheap, cheaper than uh, wind power. So, you no, know, we could use all that money far, far more wisely for our energy generation. Um, so that is just something which has happened and it goes along with the whole narrative of climate alarmism and people are doing this because you've got these crazy carbon accountants who say we must reduce our carbon dioxide emissions and our carbon footprint because carbon dioxide is harmful when it isn't. Carbon dioxide is food for trees and plants. It makes trees grow faster and bigger. And if you're worried about carbon dioxide, just let the trees grow because trees are going to take carbon dioxide out of the air. And there's, you know, I'm talking here mostly about an offshore wind farm, but the government at the moment is saying that they're now going to start allowing more onshore wind farms again, which, you know, the offshore wind farms, they kill enough birds as they, as they are, you know, gulls and things like that. But the onshore wind farms, they're, they kill, you know, beautiful birds of prey like peregrine falcons and eagles and so on. So many beautiful birds are killed by these horrible uh, blades of death when they put on shore. And, you know, they're chopping down trees to put up wind turbines, which isn't going to reduce your carbon emissions overall. You, you, you carbon accountants, think about it. You chop down trees, they're not taking that carbon dioxide out of the air. You put up one turbine to replace 2,000 trees. That's not going to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by anything like the amount that would be taken out of the air if you just let the trees alone and let them grow. Um, uh, and trees are not just, you know, they don't just have the benefit of, of taking carbon dioxide out of the air, if that's what you, you, you think it needs to be done. It doesn't. Um, but they provide habitats for animals. Uh, they, they provide food uh, for animals and for us as well. Uh, in some cases, obviously, plants do as well. So um, this whole march to wind power uh, really is based on a false um, economy of this new sort of ec economics of carbon that has been created um, since the, the Kyoto summit and then the Paris summit and the Paris climate agreement and all of these things which we, we should come out of as a nation and uh, we also need to come out of the TCA with the EU this dreadful Brexit deal that Boris Johnson has done which 
means that we are committed and bound to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions in line with whatever the EU does, because we're not allowed an advantage. We've agreed to a level playing field on environmental policy, which means that we have to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions um, at the same rate as the EU and not fall behind. Otherwise, they have the power to go to this joint committee and impose economic sanctions on the country. I mean, I would just come out of it, give our 12 months notice, and then we'll be free to do whatever we want with our carbon dioxide, with our energy policy, with our environment policy, and then we can reinvest in carbon-based fuels, which are cheap, good, reliable, continuous, and small nuclear power stations, which will provide continuous energy. You know, we need to build our carbon and nuclear capacity up to 50 gigawatts, not wind, because that is a fool's game. It's a fool's errand. And um, this is just another step on the way to that fool's errand, which, of course, is supported by both the, the fake conservative government. We've got the Labour opposition, Lib Dem, Green, SNP. They all support this nonsense. So if you want financial responsibility, if you want continuous reliable energy to keep the lights on in your home, which will provide you with cheap energy, cheap electricity. We got massively expensive uh, energy at the moment because they're pursuing this nonsense of uh, wind and solar with increasingly high strike prices, which we need to subsidize. And that means we get higher energy bills. You know, and of course, they pursued uh, war with Russia, which is ridiculous. Um, you know, Russia is not our enemy. We should be uh, trading with Russia and uh, purchasing cheap um carbon-based fuels from Russia uh, and Norway, as well as developing our own, uh, rather than sort of uh, uh, shutting them up and not using them. Uh, and that will reduce our energy prices. So if you want that, just simple common sense. Please join me in the Heritage Party. Vote for us. Uh, we'll be standing in as many places as we can in local and uh, the local elections and the Westminster elections coming up in 2024. Uh, and you can join us as well if you'd like to um, at heritageparty.org. Everyone who joins us really helps uh, me, helps the party to keep operating and it helps to support our candidates as well with um, campaign materials. Um, so people know uh, that we're there and that we care for the future of this country and uh, we want to bring back common sense and financial responsibility in every area of our government. So thanks for listening, everybody. Please, you know, do join me at heritageparty.org and uh, have a good day. God bless you all.